In my last video, I walked you step by step through the entire process of creating a YouTube channel. I showed you which features and functions to set up to improve your viewer watch time, as well as make sure that your videos are being found on both YouTube and Google search. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create branded channel art for your YouTube channel, from banners and thumbnails, all the way down to a custom profile icon. I'll show you how to visually brand yourself so that all of your channel art has a cohesive look to it. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so in my last video, I walked you through the process of setting up your YouTube channel, and I showed you how to enable some key features that would help improve your channel's overall performance. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it at the end of this one. So in this video, I'm gonna focus purely on showing you how to create branded channel art. I'll show you how to create banners, thumbnails, and profile icons that all have a visually cohesive look to them. That way, no matter where viewers are viewing your content, whether it's on your YouTube channel homepage, in YouTube search, or on any other social media platform, they'll be able to identify that content as belonging to your YouTube channel. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Okay, so this is where we left off in the last video. I'm gonna start off with how to create a banner image, followed by some tips on how to visually brand your channel with your profile icon. Then I'll briefly go over how to use the watermark feature, followed by a few more tips for creating branded thumbnails for your videos. I'm also gonna present both sides of the argument as to whether or not you should be using text in your thumbnails so that you'll be able to decide what's gonna work best for your channel. But before we can start working on your banner, we first need to download the YouTube banner template. You can download a free one at wevideo.com. I'll put a link to this page in the description of this video. Now, once you've downloaded this banner template, find it in your downloads folder and then right click on it and open it with Photoshop or whatever photo editing software you're using. If you don't have photo editing software, you can always use Photopea. It's basically just a free knockoff of Photoshop and you can use it right inside of your browser. You don't even have to download it. I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. Now, the reason I want you to open the image with Photoshop instead of just copying and pasting it into an already open document is because the template image is the exact size that your YouTube banner needs to be. So doing this will just prevent you from making any sizing errors. Okay, so once you have the template open, the first thing I want you to do is rename the template layer to template. Then I want you to go up to the layers menu and reduce the opacity of the layer to 50% and then lock the layer. Next, I want you to go down to the bottom layer menu and click on the create a new layer icon. I want you to drag this layer below your template layer and then change the name of the layer to background. Once you've done that, grab your bucket fill tool in the left hand menu and make sure to change the fill color to white at the bottom of the toolbar and then just bucket fill in the entire layer. Now just lock the layer. From here on in, anything that you bring into this document will be placed above the background layer but below the template layer. Because the opacity of the template layer is reduced, you'll now be able to see all of your artwork through the template. Now would be a good time to save out this file to whatever folder you set up for this project. Okay, so let's start off by taking a closer look at this banner template, just so we can get a better idea of where everything needs to go on your banner. Each of these sections represents the cropping to your banner that will occur when it's being viewed on different devices. So the center area or the text and logo safe area is the smallest that your banner will ever be cropped. And this is gonna be on a cell phone. And that's why the most important content on your banner should always fall within this area here. This area here is all you'll see on a mobile phone. But as you move up to viewing your banner on a larger device, you'll begin to see more of your banner. So on a tablet, you'll be able to see this much of your banner. On a desktop or laptop computer, you'll be able to see the entire width of your banner. And then finally, on TV, you'll be able to see the entire height and width of your banner. Now that being said, I just wanna point something out. First of all, I have never seen a full-size banner on any TV. And I've viewed YouTube channels on multiple brands of both large and small screen televisions. And I have never seen a YouTube banner that was any larger than this. Now it's possible that the full screen appears when you're viewing YouTube through a gaming console like PlayStation or Xbox. I don't know, I'm not a gamer. But as far as big screen TVs go, I've never seen a banner that looked any different than it does on your desktop monitor. 
Secondly, I have an iPad and the banner shows up exactly the way it does on a desktop monitor. It's the full length, no cropping. Now it's possible that the banners may be cropped on an Android device. Again, I don't know. So take what I just said with a grain of salt. What I'm basically getting at is, when you create your banner, do your best to get all of the important stuff within this safe area here. But if you have to leave something to this outer area, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Because most people are still going to see your entire banner, regardless of whether they're on a TV, desktop, laptop, or tablet. It's mostly on a phone when your banner is going to be cropped. Okay, so before we get started creating my banner for Unwind Ambient Music, which is the name that I chose when I created my YouTube channel in the last video, I want to start out by taking a look at some examples of some really well-made channel banners. So let's get to it. Okay, so when you're creating a banner for your channel, there are three pieces of information that should always be on it. And the first is, you need to identify your brand. The second piece of information is something that tells new viewers what your channel is all about. And the last piece of information is your video upload schedule. So if we take a look at this banner here, the brand identity is Gizmo Slip. As for what the channel is all about, it's about all kinds of different gadgets. How do I know that? Because that's what a gizmo is. You don't always need a written description of what your channel is about, especially if what your channel is about is in the very name of your channel. And as for how often this channel uploads new videos, every Saturday. So everything I need to know as a viewer is right on this banner. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This channel is called Upflip. The brand identity is right here on his hoodie. Your brand identity doesn't always have to be the main focus of the banner. Sometimes just doing something as simple as this is good enough. What's this channel about? It's about teaching business owners how to achieve success. And as for how often the channel uploads, every Monday at 10 a.m. Now keep something in mind here. These social media icons only appear on the desktop version of your YouTube channel. But if you have a link that you want to draw people's attention to, don't be afraid to utilize this space here to do it. Now ideally, you'd like to have all of this information appear in the center of your banner so that it shows up on all devices including mobile phones. But if it's just making the center of your banner look too congested, then don't worry about it. Just place it to the side. Remember what I said earlier. Pretty much everything from a tablet up shows the entire banner anyway. Okay, next one. So on this banner, the brand is Drum Channel. The channel topic is drumming. I mean, based on the name alone, it's a pretty safe bet that this isn't a food channel. And finally, the video upload schedule. Everything is here. On a side note, it never hurts to include an image that pertains to your channel's content in your banner. So having this image of a drummer here just solidifies the topic of your content. Now there are going to be times where the brand of your channel is the creator of the channel. Kind of like this. So in this case, the brand identity is Rich Roll and his logo is his face. What's this channel about? It's a podcast that uploads every week. This banner is very minimal, but it tells you everything you need to know. Now you may be thinking, well, telling me that it's a podcast doesn't really give me a clear idea of what the channel's content is all about. But by leaving this channel definition as broad as just podcasts, we'll keep the creator's options open as to what type of subjects he can discuss on his channel later on. Niching down on the definition of your channel isn't always a great idea, and it can really limit your options as to the direction your channel goes in the future. So sit down and really think about where you want your YouTube channel to go before you define it. So here's another example of where the channel definition is baked right into the channel brand. So the channel's brand is Guitario, and it's obviously about guitars. And as for the upload schedule, it's every week. Again, the channel banner doesn't have to be very complex, just as long as it gets those three key pieces of information across to new viewers. Now this next channel is, in my opinion, one of the best branded channels on YouTube. So let's break down this banner. The brand name of this channel is Benny Productions, and Benny is the face of his brand. He uploads videos weekly and his content is Photoshop Entertainment. And just to drive that definition home, he has an extremely Photoshopped image taking up about 60% of the banner. This is by far the most professionally branded banner that I've seen on YouTube. He tells you everything you need to know about his channel in 8 words. Benny Productions is the brand name, weekly video uploads, the content is Photoshop Entertainment, and he's changing his content theme next December. I've read YouTube channel about pages that tell you less than this banner does. Now he's a professional graphic artist, and a very good one at that, and it's no surprise that this banner is this good. 
But ultimately, it's this type of efficiency and quality that you should be striving for on your own banner. Okay, so let's jump back into Photoshop and start creating the banner for my YouTube channel, Unwind Ambient Music. Now, just for the sake of saving time, I've already mocked this banner up. So I'm just gonna reveal it to you layer by layer so that you can see what I've done. So the first layer we're gonna wanna add in is the background image. Now your banner doesn't necessarily have to be an image. It can just be a solid color, gradient, or some type of pattern. But if you're gonna do that, just make sure that there's something else in the banner that identifies your brand, or at least hints to the type of content that you're gonna be uploading on this channel. So like in this Gizmo Slip banner, this little graphic of a cell phone helps to further clarify what this channel's content is going to be about. So in this case, just using a two-tone blue gradient background is fine. Even on this Rich Roll banner, he's telling you with text that this is a podcast channel. And he's using his own image to let you know that he's going to be the interviewer in these podcasts. So again, the solid gray background is fine. But if you're going to use an image for your background, try to use one that pertains to your channel's content. Now my channel is an ambient music channel. And what says ambient music more than someone relaxing and listening to music? So I'm gonna use this photo here as my background. And I found this image on Pexels. There are thousands and thousands of royalty-free images that you can use on Pexels to create your channel art. And they're all free. I'll put a link to that website in the description of this video. Now when you place your image on your template, make sure that the most important areas of the image are falling within the safe areas of your banner. All I really need from this image is the woman's face and a clear shot of the headphones. As long as that's in my safe area, everything else is just background. So I added white layer partitions just so you could get a better idea of where the banner is going to be cropped. And as I said earlier, I've personally never seen a full banner on any television that I've surfed YouTube on. So if you want to add these partitions to your own banner image before you upload it, you can. Or you can just upload it with the entire image exposed. Either way, it's still going to be cropped to here. Now before I move on, I just want to point out that I've added a little bit of contrast to the image by using a levels adjustment. All I did was brought the center marker from 1 to 0.9. And all that did was made the image a little bit richer. So the next thing I did was create a custom branded logo for my banner. Now you don't have to do this. I did it because I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. But if you want to use just normal text, that's perfectly fine. Now, if you're not a graphic artist and you want a custom brand logo, you can always hire an artist on a site like Fiverr to do it for you. I'll put a link to Fiverr in the description below. A custom brand logo is nice to have because it allows you to extend your branding to your profile icon. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of creating your profile icon. But that being said, the best branded channel that I've ever seen is just using plain text for the brand name. So it's up to you. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add to my banner is a content definition. Now I already have ambient music in my logo, and that's technically the definition of my channel. But I have some extra room here, so I'm going to elaborate on the definition. Normally I'm fine with just placing text directly on the background image, but in this case, because there are so many tone variations in this image, some element of my text is going to be camouflaged by the image. So with dark text, the letters in relaxation and the word and don't read very well. And if I were to change the font color to white, then everything else becomes difficult to read. So in this case, I'm just going to use a banner behind the text. It definitely makes the text far more legible. Now since my banner is black, which is one of my three main colors in my branding, I have an opportunity here to further tie in my branding to my overall banner. So what I'm going to do is add a tan colored drop shadow to the banner. It's very subtle, but it gives the image a more finished look to it. Now I could have just used the drop shadow effect in the effects menu, but in this case, it was just easier to duplicate the black banner, change the duplicate banner color to tan, and then just move it behind the black layer and then lower it down a few pixels. Okay, so the last thing I want to add to my banner is my video upload schedule. Now ideally, I would like to put it in the center area, but I would have to cover the woman's face, and I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to utilize this empty space on the far right hand side of my banner. And I'm just going to place my text diagonally in the top corner. Now I could just use black text for this and it would be very legible. But since I already have a black banner in my image, using one more up here will just allow me to tie the top of my image in with the bottom. So I'm going to change the text color to white and then add in a diagonal black banner in behind it. 
And just to keep the brand and color palette consistent, I'm gonna add the tan drop shadow to this banner as well. Again, it's very subtle, but it just helps to give the banner a finished look. And that's it. Everything I need on my banner is in here. My brand identity, my channel definition, and my video upload schedule. My banner is complete. When it comes time to export your banner out of Photoshop or whatever photo editor you're using, just export it out as a PNG. This will give you the highest quality image. And to upload your banner, just go back into your YouTube channel dashboard and then click on the Customize tab in the left-hand menu. Then click on the branding heading. Under Banner Image, just click Upload. Now whether you choose to use the color partitions on the top and bottom of your banner is entirely up to you. Whether you use the partitions or not, your banner is going to look exactly the same in this area on all devices, with the exception of certain TVs. So if you want the whole image to appear on TVs, then leave the partitions turned off. I myself don't like this look. I would rather see the banner show up on TV with the partitions on it. I mean, it's not like viewers are going to be hanging out on this page anyway. This page would only be a quick stop before they reached your videos. So once you've verified that it all looks good, just hit the Done button. Now all you have to do is hit the Publish button. Then click on the View Channel link to see how your banner looks on your channel homepage. It's always a good idea to view your banner on both the light and dark appearance settings, just to make sure it works on both. Now on a side note, I created this logo purely for this video. I have no intention of starting up an ambient music channel, but I kind of like this logo and I didn't want to see it go to waste. Now I'm a big advocate for meditation and yoga, so what I did is I created another version of this logo, but replaced the words ambient music with the words your body and mind. So now the whole logo reads unwind your body and mind. And then I threw the logo on t-shirts, hoodies, as well as other apparel in both black and white in my spread shop. So if you or someone you love is into meditation and yoga and you want to pick one of these up, I have a link to my spread shop store in the description of this video. Okay, enough of the shameless plug. Moving on. So when it comes to creating my logo or profile icon, I want to try and tie in my branding from my channel banner. Now, if you're someone who's going to be using your face as your brand, I strongly suggest that you try and use the exact same image as the one that's in your banner, or at least one that's shot in the same manner. And I'll explain why it's so important to keep your branding consistent a little later on in the video. But for now, just know that your banner and icon branding should match. Now for those of you who aren't using your face as your brand, try and tie some aspect of your logo into your profile icon. So what I'm going to do with my icon is take the meditating woman element of my logo and tie that together with the first letter of my brand name, which is the U in Unwind. And I'm also going to carry over the two main colors of my banner, which are black and tan. So first I'm going to start off by adding in the meditating woman. Just for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to use her whole body instead of just her upper torso like I did in the logo. The curve of her legs will give the icon sort of a rounded feel. And finally, to tie in the tan color, I'm going to use a bold letter U in behind her. Now you can't really see this, but this meditating woman is actually on top of a white ellipse. If I was to turn on a black background, you could see it. So all of this area here where the black is, is going to be transparent, or white, when I export this file out. And you want to be conscious of that when you're designing your own icon. Because some people will be viewing YouTube using the light theme, and others will be viewing it using the dark theme. And you want to make sure that your profile icon looks good in both situations. Now even though YouTube crops all profile icons to circular, when you're exporting this file out as a PNG, you may want to choose transparency for your background over a solid color. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So to upload your profile icon, just go back to your channel customization page. Under the branding menu, and in the picture section, choose upload. Find your image in the pop-up menu, and just make sure that none of your icon is being cropped off in the circle. If everything looks good, click the done button. Once again, just click the publish button to finalize it, and then click the view channel when it's done. Take a minute to see what your icon looks like in both the light and dark themes, just to make sure it all works. So the last image we need to upload in the branding area is the video watermark. Now this is the icon viewers click on when they want to subscribe to your channel right from your video. A lot of people just upload a standard YouTube subscribe icon here, and you can do that as well. But if you want to brand your channel even further, you can also upload a 150 by 150 pixel version of your profile icon in this spot. But just remember, this section won't crop your image as a circle, it's going to leave it as a square. 
So if you want this watermark to be round, then you're gonna have to save your icon out as a PNG with transparency. Otherwise, the space that lies outside of your circular icon will just be filled in with white. So just keep that in mind. And as you can see, the subscribe button pops up as soon as you hover over the watermark. So you don't necessarily need to use a subscribe icon in this spot. Putting your profile icon here is just one more way to further brand your channel. Okay, let's talk about thumbnails. So when it comes to creating thumbnails, there are basically three accepted practices that pretty much encompass all of the different types of thumbnails that you can find on YouTube. Now there are a few important factors that will determine which type of thumbnail will be best for your YouTube channel. So I'm going to show you some examples of the three different types of thumbnails, and then I'll go over how to determine which thumbnail is best for you. Okay, so the first accepted practice is putting no text whatsoever into your thumbnail. Now there are two places where these type of thumbnails work best. The first is when you're dealing with a subject matter that doesn't require any additional explanation. And here's a prime example of that. Drawaholic is an art channel that posts speed drawing videos. Now just looking at any one of these thumbnails, I know exactly what to expect from this video. It's going to be a drawing video and the subject of this drawing video is going to be the image that's in the thumbnail. I know it's going to be a time lapse or speed drawing because these images are very complex and these videos are all under 10 minutes long and this quality of art cannot be drawn in under 10 minutes. And because there's nothing in the video title except the character's name, I'm going to assume that there won't be any type of topical narration in these videos and that they're just going to have music playing in the background. And that's exactly what these videos deliver. There's no need for text. And the same thing holds true for food channels. All you really need is a good photo of the food and then a little hint as to what the video is about in the title. Another example of this type of thumbnail can be found on the channel The Proper People. These two guys are urban explorers and in each video they explore old abandoned buildings. The title of the video clearly states what they're doing in this video, exploring an amazing 18th century estate. So all you need to have in the thumbnail is a really clear photo of what you're exploring. The second place where these type of no text thumbnails work is when you're the face of your brand and you've already established yourself as someone who delivers good quality content. A good example of this is the YouTube channel Better Ideas. The host of this channel is Joey Schweitzer and he's the face of his brand. Now he's established the reputation of being able to deliver high quality thought provoking content. So when people see his face in a thumbnail, they know that watching this video is not going to be a waste of their time. Now this technique only works once you're established and have developed that reputation of delivering good content. If you're brand new to YouTube and nobody knows who you are, this isn't going to work for you. Even Joey himself used text in his thumbnails in the early days. It wasn't until he had a decent sized following that he ditched the text and just started using his face. So if you're going to use this technique, you're going to need to feel it out and make sure that your channel and audience are ready for it. Okay, so the second practice is using very minimal text. In this situation, all you're using the text for is to emphasize one particular aspect of your video that you think viewers will be drawn to. Now a channel that uses this technique quite a bit is Sam and Colby. If you're not familiar with this channel, it's two young guys who do paranormal investigations. So if you look at the thumbnails where they're using this technique, you can see that they're just trying to entice the viewer with one particular aspect of the video. Like on this video here, the demon on Goatsman Bridge, chased out. What chased you out? A dog? Police? A demon? What was it? They're using this technique to develop intrigue. And they do this on a lot of their thumbnails. This one here, overnight. That would be scary. The Conjuring. That movie was pretty messed up. I wouldn't want to go into that house, but I'd sure as hell like to watch them do it. I think you get the idea. Now the last practice is using more text. Now this is one that I tend to lean towards for my own YouTube channel. What's great about this technique is that if you do it right, and I'm just now learning how to do it right myself, you actually get two opportunities to hook your potential viewer. A channel that uses this technique very well is Charisma On Demand. Just take a look at some of their thumbnails. The three second trick, how to command respect if you're quiet. Start doing this, how to radiate confidence under pressure. And don't fall for this, five signs that a narcissist is gaslighting you. In all three thumbnails, the text in the thumbnail is just a hook to get the viewer's attention. Then the title of the video gives them a little more context as to what the video is going to be about. It's actually a really useful technique. 
Now, if you're gonna use more text in your thumbnails, you need to make sure that it's legible, even at a very small size. If you can't read the text, then there's no reason to put it in your thumbnail. The thumbnails on my personal YouTube channel are bordering on too much text, and I'm well aware of that. My problem is that I myself personally am attracted to visually busy things. I could walk past all of these stores and not see a single sign. This does not grab my attention. This does, which is why my video library looks the way it does. And because of my OCD, if I was to replace all of my thumbnails tomorrow with no text thumbnails, I would never be able to sleep again. So maybe one day I'll find a good 12-step thumbnail program to help me with my problem. But until that time, my thumbnails will remain this way. Let me know in the comment section below what grabs your attention, busy or simple thumbnails. I have to believe there are at least a few of you out there who are freaks like me. And if you're going to use more text, another tip is to stay away from script fonts. They can be really hard to read on thumbnails. Try to keep your text big and bold. Okay, so let's get started on creating some thumbnails for my ambient music channel. So the first thing that I recommend that you do right after creating your YouTube channel banner and icon is create a thumbnail template. And to create a template, all you have to do is create a Photoshop document that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. The reason that you want your thumbnails to be that large is because on the off chance that someone finds your video off the YouTube platform, when they get to your video, it's just going to be your thumbnail with a play button over top of it. And if they're viewing your video on a big screen TV, you want that thumbnail to be in HD. So make your thumbnails 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now, one of the greatest things about having a thumbnail template is because you're branding your thumbnails, you're going to be using the same fonts, the same color palettes, as well as a lot of the same graphic art on all of your thumbnails. So having all of that stuff pre-set up in one convenient Photoshop file is going to save you a lot of time down the road. So the first thing that I want to do here is add in some type of imagery that signifies what the viewer is going to see in this video. Now remember, this is an ambient music channel, so the viewer is really just clicking on my video to listen to some relaxing music. But I made it very clear on my channel about page that each three hour video would contain stunningly beautiful scenes from nature. So that's what I'm going to put in my thumbnail. Now no matter what type of imagery you're using, make sure it pops. If you're using black and white imagery, add some contrast to it. If you're using color imagery, add some vibrance or saturation to it. You can do that by going up to the Adjustments tab in the right-hand menu and just adding a Vibrance Adjustment layer. Increasing the saturation is going to take the most dominant color and pump it up. Just be careful with saturation. You can blow out an image really quickly if you overdo it. Adding Vibrance is just going to make every color in the image richer. So I recommend leaning heavier on Vibrance for your color images rather than saturation. But either way, you want your images to be able to grab a viewer's attention in YouTube search. Now a lot of YouTube creators would just stop here, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially for a thumbnail on an ambient music video. The title of your video is going to describe the music the viewer is going to be listening to, so all you really need is some imagery to give the viewer some indication of what they're going to be seeing in the video. But if you want to brand your YouTube thumbnails, then we need to go a little further. Right off the bat, one of the things that I recommend is just adding a border. All adding a border does is let people know that this thumbnail isn't just some random screen capture from the video. That you, the creator, actually put some time and thought into creating this thumbnail. It just gives your thumbnail a simple touch of professionalism. Now because I told my viewers in my channel banner that they'd be able to find music on my channel that could be used in a variety of purposes like concentration, relaxation, sleeping, studying, meditation, and so on, it's not a bad idea to give the viewer a textual hint as to what this video could be best used for. So using that minimal text technique to emphasize a particular aspect of this video would work really well here. So let's say the music in your video was created for meditating. Well, when you're meditating, you're trying to find inner peace, so why not use the word peace? Now you may be thinking, why am I using a bold font? Because there are already a lot of ambient music channels using regular fonts to brand their thumbnails, and I want mine to stand out. Now I could easily leave this thumbnail right here, but the one thing I haven't done is brand my thumbnail to my logo and channel banner. My three key colors for my channel brand are white, black, and tan. Now I've got the white, but I don't have the black and tan. 
Because I have a lot of empty space on this thumbnail, I could actually incorporate my logo right into my thumbnail. Now normally I wouldn't recommend doing this, especially if you have more text or more complex imagery in your thumbnail. If your thumbnail is already busy, bringing in your logo is just going to make it look cluttered. Because this one is so wide open, you can get away with it if you do it right. And doing it may actually help with your brand recognition. So if I was going to do it, I'd probably do something like this. It ties in all of my brand colors and it doesn't overpower my thumbnail, even at smaller sizes. So that's it, my thumbnail is done. And the beautiful thing about having this thumbnail template is, when I want to create my next branded thumbnail, all I have to do is change the background image and then change the text. So you could go through and create about 50 branded thumbnails in about an hour. Now I don't actually have any videos to upload, so I did a quick mock-up to give you an idea of what my channel might look like when it's done. This is a visually branded YouTube channel. Look, regardless of what type of content you're creating, the most important thing you need to focus on to build your channel is creating good quality content. If you're a sculptor who teaches people how to sculpt, then you need to establish the reputation for being good at teaching people how to sculpt. If you're a photographer, you need to establish the reputation for being good at teaching photography, and the same holds true for any skill, regardless of what it is. But once you've started developing that reputation, the second most important thing you need to do to build your channel is get people to recognize your brands. If you have the reputation of creating good quality content and being good at what you do, people are going to watch your videos regardless of what's on your thumbnails. If someone who likes your content is searching for a particular topic and as they scroll through all of the search results recognize your brand, there's a good chance that they're going to click on that video just because of the way they feel about your content. Now if you're branding your thumbnail with your face, then you have a little more wiggle room to play with when it comes to what goes on your thumbnail. But if you're not, then you need to make sure that you have a very distinct branding style. Because if your thumbnails all look completely different and you're constantly changing your profile icon every other week, then the fact that you have the reputation for creating good content isn't going to make a difference if your viewers don't recognize the video as being one of yours. Let me give you an example from outside of YouTube to help drive this point home. Let's say that you're a huge fan of Nike running shoes. You love their quality and it's the only brand that you'll ever buy. And let's say that you're walking through a shoe store one day looking for your next pair of Nike running shoes. Now let's say that this particular shoe here looks exactly like the type of shoe that you want to buy, but for some reason Nike left all of their branding off of it. Would you pick it up and try it on, knowing that it might be a cheaper quality knockoff? Or would you just pass it by and continue searching the store for the same style of shoe but made by Nike? Most diehard Nike fans wouldn't even give that shoe a second glance. And the funny thing is, it's the exact same shoe, with the exact same quality. It's made by Nike. But because the branding isn't on it, that shoe isn't perceived by that particular customer as having the same level of quality that only Nike products have. The same thing holds true when it comes to your branding on YouTube. Just like people are walking past shoes in a store, viewers are scrolling past videos in search and you only have a split second to grab their attention, to let them know that that video was made by you. So when it comes to creating channel art for your YouTube channel, taking shortcuts on the branding could be the biggest mistake you ever make. Okay, so hopefully this video has given you some pretty good ideas on how to visually brand the banner, thumbnails, and profile icon of your YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on how to create and set up all of the most important features for your YouTube channel, then be sure and watch that video next. I'll put a link to it at the end of this one. As always, if you like this type of content and you find it useful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to let me know. Now, if you're somebody who's just getting started on YouTube or somebody who's just thinking about getting started on YouTube, then be sure and check out my playlist, Getting Started on YouTube. You can find all kinds of great tips and ideas to help kick off your YouTube journey. And you can find a link to that playlist right here. Until next time, take care.